Have you ever wondered if you could tile over your existing linoleum floors? Well, the answer is yes. And today I'm gonna to show you the very specific steps that you need to follow to successfully lay tile over your linoleum floors. Most outdated homes have linoleum floors in the bathrooms, and this is to save money and cost when it comes to building. The purest way would be to remove the linoleum, but the issue with that is it has adhesive that you have to remove after the linoleum. And after you're done with that, you have to remove the particle board that's holding it all together. Well, after talking to multiple tile guys, we have a game plan I'm excited to share with you. First things first, we need to remove the baseboard so the tile edges can be concealed nicely underneath. With our baseboards removed, one of the first critical steps we need to do is degrease our existing linoleum floors. We can't afford to have any kind of grease on it, any kind of dirt or debris or any other kind of chemicals that are here that who knows happened when our kids use this bathroom. There are a variety of chemicals that are recommended to do this heavy duty degreasing. One of them is trisodium phosphate, very inexpensive. Another option is using Dawn detergent, the blue stuff, supposedly that works a lot better. And the third one they say is classical Borex cleaner. This is stuff we had on hand in our kitchen, so let's use this. I'm realizing this is quickly turning into like a Better Homes and Guard Martha Stewart kind of episode. On the next episode, I'll show you how to get those crummy wine stains out of your favorite t-shirt. Now the toilet area is gonna be very critical to do a very thorough job degreasing because you had not only silicone or caulking here, but you also have the residue of the wax ring that was there before on the toilet bowl. So we wanna get all that crud out to make sure that the tile around the toilet, specifically around the toilet, has a really good strong bond. Next up to ensure that our linoleum floors don't fail our thin set and tile is to ensure and repair any linoleum that's currently damaged or loose. For the most part, all of the linoleum looks solid down the middle. If you have any bubble spots or loose spots that you can tap and press in, you can make a hole and either cut that area out or create that hole and put any kind of adhesive in there. Now for the most part, even though this is in great condition, we still have a few vulnerable spots that we need to address. One of them specifically are around the transition pieces in and out of the room. For spots like that, we're just gonna use some kind of adhesive. This is from Flex Glue. I still had a few tubes laying around here. The great thing about it is it has instant grab, so I don't have to tape it down. So we're gonna lift it up, pry it up a little bit, put a bead in there and press it down, and it should set us up for success. And like I said, the toilet area is such a vulnerable spot. So as you can see, there is loose linoleum there. So what I'm gonna do is just lift that up, squirt some glue in there, and then press that puppy down, and we should be looking good. Next up to prepare linoleum floors to receive the tile and thin set is we need to scuff up the top of the linoleum. Linoleum is a very smooth surface that's not porous. It's great for spills, but it's terrible for receiving any kind of adhesion through either glue or thin set or anything like that. So to give our thin set the best opportunity for a strong bond, we're gonna use our random orbital sander and start scuffing up this area so that we'll be ready for success. Let's get successful. Now, it might not look like we did a lot, but it definitely got rid of the top sheen, which is perfect. A little bit less gloss, better adhesion. Now, let's get our thin set mortar ready. Thin set mortar. Make sure the tile you're working with is either ceramic or porcelain or stone, whatever it is, look at these specifications. And bigger than that is the type of size of the tile you're using. And just to be safe and sorry, make sure it's polymer modified. It gives it an extra additive to make sure it's extra sticky. Per instructions, we mixed it about five minutes. We're gonna let it sit for another five to 10. And here's why. Think of it as like baking flour. It's powder, it's dry, water hits it. You're mixing it up, but there's still stuff that's still trying to dissolve. So the particles are in here are still trying to dissolve. Once they get hit with all the moisture, they dissolve. Then we mix it again, and then we're ready to install. So the tile, this is a Madison Celeste polished porcelain tile. 
Not that expensive. It's uh, 36 bucks a box. We only needed three boxes. This should be great. Now, uh, how do we install it? Got our thin set mortar here all mixed up. This is a large format tile. We're using a half inch trowel. And here's where the big kicker. When you're using smaller tile, it's, you don't really have to level it that much because it's kind of forgiving. When you're using large format tile, you need some kind of leveling systems to make sure the tile is not all one tire than the other. This is a, just an inexpensive system from Lowe's. Uh, this is a fast cap system. So this is your riser, goes on the bottom, uh, 1 16th gap. This goes in, screws on, it creates a perfect match. Really easy to use, I've used them multiple times. You always have to buy brand new spacers and lifters, but these caps, you get to reuse them. As you can see, used them before in the last project. Let's get started. This is the notch size. Think of it as the leveling part. Once we apply the back butter, which is basically better contact for the tile, less opportunity for air bubbles. Once we lay this down, it'll compress these little notches down to make sure it's even and flat. Place it right over, gently drop it. Now, I don't like start pressing it right away. I wanna get a few pieces of tile in and then I can start maneuvering it to make sure it levels together. Drop our spacers in. These little edges will squeeze out and they'll interfere with your grout line. So just get a little bit of that out of the way. Oh, got my spacer. Got my spacers. Now that everything is laying in here, clean up any excess mortar that got on your tile. That'll make for an easier cleanup later. And now we're ready to install our levelers and squeeze everything down. A little shake, a little shake, press down, shake, press down. We're collapsing all of these little risers that were made from our trowel. Put our little fast caps on, lightly tighten them on. All right, they're all lightly screwed on. Now we do a final tightening to make sure everything is completely leveled and on the same plane. Oh my gosh, my gosh, that is so perfect. And then just do a final cleaning and then rinse and repeat. Let's finish off this bathroom. Now make sure you don't go anywhere. I'm gonna show you how to get flawless clean grout lines so you'll be proud of your work. Stay tuned.
Got the lifters kicked off. They're super easy to break off. You literally just kick them off in the direction that they're facing, and then the lifter stays there, the gap is perfect, and then this thing is out. Let's get a grout ready. Mix it in the grout right now, out of the water. The instructions have to mix it for like seven minutes, which is longer than the thin set, and then let it sit for another five, 10 minutes, mix it up again, we'll be ready to put it on. We got our tile squeegee. We're literally just gonna press the stuff into all these crevices, the gaps, and it'll stay there. You don't have to put too much, scrape it off. All the excess will be so much easier to clean up. We're gonna let the sucker dry for 15 minutes, maybe even 30, and then start wiping it off. Let's get scrubbing. You might be thinking, oh, you're just scrubbing away. This might as well be a cleaning channel. You know, you don't understand. What I'm doing right here, this, I'm poetry in motion right now. This is. This is me and my element right now. We're bringing Zen and getting ourselves centered. Get it nice and clean. Then we're gonna use paper towel, wipe it down. This puppy's gonna glow, and then tomorrow we'll be able to walk on it. Just trust the process. And of course, no flooring is complete without the baseboard. Now, if you're one of the unlucky types like myself who has these rounded over edges, they become a little tricky. So the cuts are 22 and a half by 22 and a half, each one, flip them over, and you got a beautiful piece. And it's always a smoother, cleaner, faster job when you miter these corners and you glue them in place. I use CA glue with an activator, puts them in place very strong. Enough yapping, let's throw this on. Hey, thanks for sticking around watching another one of my videos. If you like more home improvement stuff, check out this video right over here and make sure you subscribe right there. See you in the next one, bye.